I'm John McQuillan um, with Openjaw Technologies and I'm the president of Openjaw Technologies and one of the co-founders. Uh, I'm originally an electronic engineer, got into software fairly early on and got into the travel industry fairly early in my career. So I started off in the travel industry with Westinghouse and that was back in 1984 and um, we were the guys who used to make the, the old terminals that you would see in the airport, all the check-in desks and the res centers, we made the terminals. So that's where I started in the, the travel industry. I worked in Datalex for about 13 or 14 years, left Datalex in 2001 post September 11th and um, was one of the co-founders of Openjaw. Um, left at that time because there was a lot of consolidation going on and there wasn't much in the way of new development. I looked after product development, we weren't doing new development and I decided it wasn't interesting for me anymore. Left and uh, started Openjaw. Openjaw, we started the company in 2002. We're a travel technology company. We don't operate in any other sector. Um, we provide a, a range of products to a broad range of uh, travel companies. So anything from airlines, online travel agencies, we have loyalty customers, um, so a whole, a whole broad range. One of the, the, the big areas that we've focused on is the area of tea retailing. And by tea retailing, what we're trying to do is we're trying to apply the principles that we see in online retailing in general to the travel sector. And we've got a lot of resonance with our customers in doing that. And that's kind of where our evolution is, to continue to apply online retailing techniques within the travel industry. So trends that we're seeing right now, I suppose one big trend that we see a lot of is personalization. So actually personalizing the offer to the individual. Um, and to the individual in their different uh, personas, if you like, because one day the, the, the person may be traveling on leisure, another day the same person may be traveling on business. So a big emphasis is on the personalization of the offer. So if you can make the offer particularly relevant to that individual customer, then there's a, an opportun a greater opportunity to convert with that customer. So there was another trend that um, we're, we're seeing across the industry, not just travel, but uh, the tech industry in general, is the whole area of big data. And I think that's a really interesting development. I think there's, 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 there's a lot of misunderstanding around big data, and I think because it's one of the, the key trends at the moment, it has become a buzzword and it has been hijacked to some extent by marketing. So there's a lot of people talking about big data when actually they're just dealing in old analytics. Um, but big data is where you can take data not just from your own industry, but data from all sorts of different places and unstructured data and combine it to help with offering. As, a, as an example, um, you, you can get an awful lot of data out there about the weather. So what would it look like if you could tailor the offer based on the weather that you were seeing today? So are people more likely to book holidays to Spain if it's raining outside? And I think using, and that's just one example, but I think that's the way in which you can use big data is to harness data from all sorts of different places and use it in interesting ways. I guess kind of the highlight um, from an open job perspective is we started the company in 2002 and our very first customer was American Airlines and that, that still kind of remains the highlight as kind of your first customer you, you land American Airlines and there was, it, you know there was it was fortuitous to some extent but it was absolutely brilliant in terms of developing the company you you had the marquee customer it, it really validates you. The, the one that I would look at is the use of data and how we can use data. As I referenced earlier, the, the, the area of big data. I think when, there are things that you can do with consolidated data and sometimes we, try, we, we think of our data as proprietary to us and it's a competitive advantage, our own data. But I think there are ways in which that, that data can be shared and 
still be used anonymously. So for example, for years we've had, through the GDSs, we've had MIDT data. And MIDT data is consolidated data from all of the airlines that everybody can have access to and can use as a decision-making point. So I think what I would like to see would be a data clearing house, and it could be done by somebody like IATA, where you could contribute your data, your data could be anonymized, and you could get in data back, so that from a big data perspective, you can get industry data. So you're not necessarily, you know, British Airways can't necessarily see what American Airlines are doing individually, but they can compare themselves against industry trends. So you can look at overall industry trends, like how many people book holidays in Spain one week before departure date, you know, and, and some of that data might be available, but I think by consolidating data you can create opportunities to make decisions based on this much larger data set. One piece of advice I guess I would give to people starting in the industry is to look outwards. Um, be take a global perspective right from the very beginning. There's a lot of companies I think start off from the point of view of we'll look at our home market first and then we, you know, in time we'll develop to a broader market. And I think if, if, if you take that approach quite often you end up staying within your own home market and you don't develop the full potential. Because we're from Ireland, um, it, our internal market is so small that Irish companies almost start off with the global outlook by default because you just don't have a big enough home market. But I think in other markets like the UK or Germany, for example, you have such a big home market that there is a temptation just to focus on your home market. And sometimes if companies start off that way, they never make the leap to becoming global. So I think the advice I would say is, you know, have that global outlook from the very beginning. As I say, we, we were fortunate enough that our very first customer was in the US um, and uh, you know it, it, does, it does help to start off global. My favorite destination would have to be Africa um, and there's a lot of different parts of uh, Africa but when I, when I go on holidays one of the things I really like is when you go somewhere that you're, you're out of contact by default because when you're in contact, the temptation is you, you always want to check the emails, you always want to see what's happening. You get out in the bush or something, then you just have no contact and you can just get away from it all. I, you know, within, within Africa, I've been to uh, the Okavanga Delta and it's just stunningly beautiful and you're just so remote, you're uncontactable, it just forces you to switch off. You know, the first day you, you suffer withdrawal symptoms, where's the email, but you know, two days later it, you, you've forgotten.